Hi everybody, it's Brian here. I'm one of the Shotcut contributors, and today I'd like to show you how I use Shotcut to edit my home videos. Uh, typically what I do is I collect the different video files from our different cameras and devices and phones, and I save them up, and then uh, at some point I uh, go through them and sort through them and uh, take out the clips I don't want, and I try to make a about a five minute highlight reel for each month and that's the that's the thing I'm going to keep and, and the thing I might uh, watch with my family and friends. So the way I do that is the first thing I do is I I have a template file that I've created. It's an MLP project file uh, but it doesn't have any video clips in it. It just has some presets and some filters pre-configured. So let me show you what I have pre-configured in this template file. Uh, the first thing is the video mode. I've uh, created a custom HD 1080p 60 video mode that I'm going to use for my editing and I do that because that's the highest resolution and frame rate for the devices that I currently have and so I like to maintain that quality. Uh, the other thing I have in my template is uh, I have a track with some filters set up on it and uh, I'll show you how some of these filters work in just a little bit here um, but having these filters pre-configured just the way I like them guarantees that each time I make a five minute video clip for a month it's going to turn out uh, um, similar to the other ones that I've made. So I'll show you how that works. Um, so the next thing I do is uh, I just bring in the clips that I'm going to use. So here I've got a folder and I've just dumped in all the clips from the last couple of months and for the sake of this demonstration let's just uh, let's just assume I'm going to do February. So I've already finished uh, January and now I need to bring in the clips for February and there's a great little trick I can do here in Windows Explorer if I sort them by date and then I select them and I drag them in to the playlist Shotcut will import those files in the order that they were sorted which would be chronological order which is exactly what I want so now I have a playlist with all my clips in chronological order the next thing I do is Shotcut has this great feature to add all these playlist clips to the timeline. So I'll click this and uh, they will all get thrown into the timeline there. And uh, we'll have to wait just a minute here for uh, some of the uh, thumbnails and the waveforms to get created. But uh, while that's happening, um, I'll go ahead and show you uh, how I like to do the editing. So. What I like to do is um, I just play through all the clips and I look for the interesting parts. Sometimes you have to record for a little bit before something interesting happens and, and during that little bit you might not want to keep that for later so you can just cut that out. Uh, so I'll just come in and uh, you know maybe just make a snip somewhere. The other thing I do is I look for these white frames on the end. When you see a white frame like this that means that Shotcut overestimated the duration of the clip and that it's actually going to output empty frames for a little bit there. Um, so I'll just take those, clip them, and uh, remove them. So I'll watch through my videos and I'll uh, clip out the uninteresting parts and um, just kind of narrow it down to just the interesting stuff that I think I want to watch later. And uh, like I'd mentioned, I, I try to make about a five minute clip out of it if I can. Uh, I think anything more than that, I'm going to lose interest anyway. So I kind of clip it down and uh, get it to where I want it. Now let me show you how these filters work. First of all, you may have noticed that um, there's a date burned into the screen here. That's not in my videos. That's being done by the text filter. This text filter is applied to track one, so it's being applied to everything on track one. And so you can see as I click on different clips uh, that date is uh, is going to change. And so I just think that's a really convenient feature to be able to automatically get that date burned in there um, without me having to go to each clip and apply it separately. Another filter I use is the normalize filter. I use the one pass normalize filter. And uh, I do that because um, that keeps me from having to reach for the remote control and turn the volume up and down as, a, as it goes to different clips. And so, um, for example, here you can see just from looking at the waveform, uh, the transition from this clip to this clip is going to have a volume difference. And if I don't normalize that, then at this point I'm probably going to reach for my TV remote control. 
So watch what this normalize um, filter does. I, I have it configured to go for a target loudness of minus 23. And um, I also have some constraints here so it doesn't uh, increase or decrease the gain too much. Um, I use an analysis window of about 10 seconds so that it's averaging the loudness over 10 seconds. And uh, just watch what happens here when I click play. And you can see that it's adjusting the output gain automatically here, uh, somewhere between, somewhere right around 3 dB of gain reduction. Now it switches to this one, and you can see that one was louder. Now it's doing more like 7 or 8 dB of gain reduction. And so that's the convenience there. That saves me from having to go to each clip and independently set the gain for that clip. Um, another feature that I like to use is I like to put a compressor on the track. And uh, for me, the compressor is good to just uh, smooth out peaks that come along. You can see, uh, for example, in this clip right here, there's a stretch of silence and then um, there's some sound again that's quite a bit louder. And without a compressor, that's just going to, it's going to hit pretty hard and be kind of uh, distracting. So uh, watch what happens with um, the gain reduction here. It's doing nothing because the volume is low. And now it's going to hit this loud part, and it uh, applied some gain reduction so that uh, we didn't uh, have peaks or didn't have spikes that were um, uncomfortable and distracting. So those are the those are the filters that I like to use, and I feel like uh, in that combination, I get a pretty good output for very little effort, and that's that's pretty much what I'm going for. I want to process these files as quickly as possible and go do something else, but. Uh, uh, the result is I get some nice five minute clips for each month and uh, it's got the time code and it's got uh, normalized audio and uh, that works pretty good for me. So hope you found this tutorial helpful.